Hello, I'm John, and I'm coming to you from my living room to tell you about the hope found in God's Word. This is episode 5 of 7, Hardened Hearts. Dear God, I pray that during this time, we can honor you with how we pay attention to what you're convicting us about. God, I pray that our hearts are not hardened to the truth that you are trying to say to us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. There are just certain passages in scripture that make us uncomfortable. It can be because they're convicting, because they show us how things we love take us away from God, or because they present ideas about God that fall outside of the box that we've put God into. Revelation 15 and 16 are two of such chapters. John begins the next section of Revelation by saying, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last. For with them, the wrath of God is finished. You really don't want to be on the receiving end when God's wrath is finished. As much as I've said so in previous videos, you should pause this video now and read Revelation 15 and 16, since there are a lot of themes and I only have time to cover one. In chapter 15, John sees in heaven those who have conquered the beast praising the lamb. So those who have conquered uh, the powers in this world that try and pull us away from God serving Jesus. Next, he sees seven angels with seven bowls full of God's wrath. Each time an angel pours a bowl out on the earth, God judges the earth. The first bowl gives painful sores to everyone who worshipped the beast. The second bowl turns the sea into blood, killing all that lived in it. The third bowl turned all fresh water to blood. And then an angel praises God for judging the world, for worshipping the beast, and for their violence. But I'll begin reading from the fourth bowl. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire, and they were scorched by the fierce heat, and they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for the pain and the sores. They did not repent of their deeds. I'm going to skip the sixth bowl, not because it's unimportant, but because there are some themes that are off topic for us today. I would love to talk about this, but it would just take way too much time. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and the loud voice came out from the temple, from the throne saying, It is done! And there were flashes of lightning rumblings, peals of thunder, and such a great earthquake such as had never been seen since man has been on the earth. So great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away. And no mountains were to be found. And great hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on the people. And they cursed God for the plague of hail, because the plague was so severe. In this passage, we see some familiar themes. Before God started destroying humanity, he judged them softer. He gave them time to turn to him and repent. However, as these judgments ratcheted up, they still refused to repent. Every day that they continued to sin, their hearts were hardened further. Eventually, they were so hardened that they would not repent of their sin, no matter what happened. Last week, I told you that God gives us time to repent. However, this week, I want to provide the balancing clause to that statement, which is this. 
Every day that we continue in sin is a day closer to God's judgment. And one more day of our hearts getting harder. I use this term hard hearts, but I want to make sure that you all know what that means. Having a hard heart is when you continue in something that is wrong for so long that you either refuse to see it as wrong anymore, or you know that it's wrong and just don't care. Many people have said that they will live how they want to for now, but then repent and turn to God towards the end of their life. Now, there are two major problems with that. One, the Bible says that Jesus will come like a thief in the night, meaning that no one will expect him. And even if Jesus doesn't come in your lifetime, you never know what will happen to you. Life is fragile. You never know when you won't be able to repent anymore. Secondly, when we continue to do what we know is wrong, it begins to seem less wrong over time. And you begin to become numb to that feeling. Then, When God's judgment does come, or something begins pushing you towards repentance, you simply won't pay attention to it. Every day that you continue in sin, your hearts are hardened further. Eventually, they become so hard that no matter matter what happens, you will not repent. Chances are, if you haven't repented from a certain sin, your heart is already hardened towards it. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the divisions of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Only one thing is sharp enough to pierce your hardened heart, and that is scripture. That's why we need to be in scripture always, but especially my challenge for you this week is to write a Bible verse on a note card and put it somewhere where you will see it when you are tempted to commit that sin that your heart is hardened to. Scripture can pierce your hardened heart. Dear God, thank you so much for giving giving us this time to come together. God, allow us to repent and praise you. To not be like these people we just read about, who can see your judgment for our wrongdoings, but they didn't repent. God, Bring us closer to you, because that's what we all want. Thank you guys so much, and I'm so excited to see you in my next video on Wednesday.